Okay, welcome to this GCSE uh, RS revision video on component two, Christianity and its practices. And this is video four of five videos. And in this video, we're going to look at the worldwide church and the charity, the Christian charity, Tear Fund. So what we need to understand about Christian practices is its impact all over the world, the worldwide church. And as we think about these words, mission, evangelism, and church growth, um, the word mission is the idea of a task, a goal, uh, to go and do something. Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this, this going involves trying to evangelize and that uh, word evangelize means to preach the gospel to others with the intention of uh, calling them converting them to the Christian faith it is the way the gospel is spread and means preaching the good news evangelism is best uh, shows the way Christians is best shown in the way Christians live their lives rather than just talking about religion Mission is a slightly uh, bigger project, perhaps. It's what the church is supposed to do in terms of every Christian being an evangelist, as a, as a preacher of the gospel. Every Christian is to be someone who goes into all the world. It's a, a mission not just of individuals, but collectively of the church to help uh, Christians live a life of faith and, as a, a, and to spread the, the message of salvation. Uh, to all, that our sins can be forgiven, that we can be in right standing with God, we can be sure about heaven and the afterlife. Many Christians see it as a duty or a mission to convert other people to Christianity, whether they have no faith at all or belong to another religion. Missionary work in the past had the clear intention of bringing people to the Christian faith. Uh, missionaries and through missionaries, uh, they did many things. They brought education and, and built hospitals and gave health support to the poor and the disadvantaged people around the world. Today, missionary work and evangelism are more contentious and many people would debate the ethics of trying to convert people to Christianity. And there are a range of Christian attitudes. There've always been a range of Christian attitudes to whether evangelism is needed, whether mission is needed, whether it's acceptable with an increasingly uh, pluralistic world, uh, with the plurality of many religions in our society, many think it should be, we should be more respectful to different faiths, perhaps engage in religious dialogue or something like that, rather than try and persuade people to change their religion. So liberal Christians would be not so keen on evangelism and mission, conservative Christians would, both Catholics and Protestants. In terms of church growth, this is an interesting idea. While there has been a decline in church attendance in some Western, especially European parts of the world, um, some, some churches are in fact thriving in Britain. Evangelical churches uh, that are animated and charismatic are growing in numbers in the UK, even while outlying denominations like the Methodist Church and the Church of England and even the Catholic Church are, are shrinking in numbers. Worship in, in these kind of churches has no formal liturgy. It focuses on Bible reading, singing and preaching. The services can be spontaneous, moved by the Spirit. One aspect of this is church planting, uh, the process of establishing non-traditional churches. It happens when groups off form from an existing church, perhaps intentionally split off go to a new area and establish a church there. Uh, one group that does this systematically is something called Ichthys Fellowship, and it's a church planting movement. It aims to spread the Christian values by gathering new groups of disciples, new churches in any single place. Within the older churches, there is a, a movement called Fresh Expressions, and this is something that both the Methodist Church of England have embraced. 
fresh and fresh expressions attempts to attract people to perhaps churches, more traditional churches who wouldn't normally attend church services. But what they would happen is these people would meet, for example, in a cafe or on a beach or in a gym to talk about their faith. And there are different approaches to fresh expressions, uh, some that are more church like and some that are very much not like you would expect a church uh, in, to be. All, all around the world, uh, church growth, uh, it has to be noted that Christianity is a world religion. It's the biggest world religion and it's spreading and growing quite rapidly in other parts of the world. In Asia, South America, and Africa, it's estimated that 2050, four in 10 Christians will live in sub-Saharan Africa. And there are other uh, parts of the world where it's, it's specifically growing. In China, the church is growing at an exponential rate. Uh, 100, maybe 200, maybe even 300 million Christians now in China. It's hard to even know because official statistics are hard to come by in China. And church numbers are growing in, in, in parts of the world you wouldn't expect. In Iran, uh, there are per now perhaps millions of Christians in Iran and other Middle Eastern countries that you wouldn't expect. So the worldwide church, uh, the church specifically then in its work around the world. And one important Christian charity is Tear Fund. Tear Fund uh, is connected with perhaps more of the sort of evangelical side of the church although it's an ecumenical charity. Uh, it's particularly supported by the evangelical and more conservative side of the church. And the kind of things that Tear Fund does, well, it is a, a charity that campaigns against child trafficking and um, that sort of thing. <coughs> um, has a campaign called Ordinary Heroes, where it allows others to live a full life. Uh, fair Trade, uh, Tear Fund supports Fair Trade. It supports water aid, digging wells so people can kind of clean water in different parts of the world. It works against poverty, it works against discrimination, it works for social justice. And so Tear Fund's strapline is following Jesus where the need is greatest. Following Jesus where the need is greatest. And it follows other Christian teaching we've done on wealth and poverty. Um, to do to others as you'd want them to do to you. To serve the basic needs of people. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting those in prison and who are sick, uh, and so on. For an example, in South America, in Colombia, it works with children and teenagers. It set up more than 30 sports clubs where children can come for football training. The clubs provide safe spaces where young people are at no risk of joining the gangs. They offer mentoring and equip them with life skills to give them hope and ambition. Tear Fund is an important charity because they have a role in raising public awareness to social issues such as poverty and discrimination in the world. They campaign against the causes of poverty worldwide and they give practical help in order to help out uh, the and practice the teachings of Jesus to help others to do for others as you want them to do for you. To agape in action, to agape, to love your neighbors, you love yourself. They encourage self-help for individuals and community, not just um, give humanitarian aid, but give them aid where they can help themselves, teach them how to uh, use particular technologies, for example, at work in particular contexts. Tear Fund thus, uh, thinking about Tear Fund, are a Christian charity who aim to put Christian beliefs about Jesus' command to love our neighbour, agape, into action. Christians believe that they are putting into practice the unconditional, unselfish, agape love that Jesus talks about in the Bible. Tear Fund helps in over 50 countries, providing emergency aid when disasters occur and carrying out long-term projects to provide support for local communities. In the UK, many people support Tear Fund by raising money through coffee mornings and buying Tear Fund Christmas cards. So this is video four of five videos in Christian practices. Now go and have a go at some practice questions on the website, marlingre.net. Have a go at uh, the Quizlets, Peter Kernahan, uh, and join the short course, learn uh, some quotations and vocabulary, and have a go at reading some model essay answers.